Hello and welcome to Deaf Bible Study for this week. I'm, I'm excited to continue our study of the Sermon on the Mount. This is our Lesson 11. It's interesting to me what Jesus taught about. I want to tell you a story to get started. I was taught from a young boy growing up that it is an honor to give to the work of God. Uh, this is a picture of my grandfather. I never met my grandfather. He died before I was born, but he was a, a man who was faithful to God. And my, my mother told the story about him uh, when she was just a young girl. This is my mom when she was young, that my grandfather promised to my mother to buy her a musical saxophone saxophone and uh, she was excited she wanted to play she wanted to learn how to play the music on that but something happened um, my mother never got the saxophone uh, she never saw it why because my grandfather went to church with his eight children my mother was one of eight children they went to church and a missionary came through their church one night and my grandfather was very touched with the missionary's message and his needs. And after church, my grandfather approached my mother and he told her, I'm sorry, I used the money I was saving for your saxophone. God touched my heart to give it to the missionary and my grandfather gave to the missionary. He was a hard worker. He was poor. He was a farmer. Uh, but the money he had saved, God touched his heart and he gave. Um, it's interesting to me that my grandfather, my grandfather gave that money for the support of a missionary. And that my wife and I today are missionaries. And we depend on people like my grandfather, who are touched to give, who be faithful to give their hard-earned money. So today, Jesus here on this sermon, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. In this message today, you're going to see Jesus teach about giving. It's interesting to me that a uh, part of, uh, really a main part of Jesus' preaching time here on this mount was about giving and praying. Uh, this week, we're going to see him talk about giving, and next week we'll talk about prayer. He talks about that. But I want you to see what Jesus taught about giving. It's interesting because Jesus never taught about how much to give. He talked about why we give and how we should give and so we're going to focus on those two things today but let's pray heavenly father we're thankful for the opportunity to come open the bible we pray that you will touch our hearts help us lord as we watch this uh, video i pray for the folks that are there help them to see their own situation their own life and father we thank you for blessing us and giving us things that we can give back to you. I pray that you would help me to be clear today. I pray for the folks who are watching here that they'll be able to see uh, some truths in the Bible today that will help them. Thank you for these verses. Help us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, we're going to get started. Matthew chapter 6. I want you to see verse 1. We'll start with verse 1. Uh, the Bible says here in verse 1, take heed, means what? Pay attention. Pay attention, what? That you do not your alms. This is just another word for giving. So he says, T pay attention to how that you don't give before men to be seen of them. Otherwise... Ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. 
I want you to see what Jesus is saying. He says, he starts with, he says, focus on not giving wrong. Remember, I told you, you're going to see Jesus talk about how to give and why to give. Here, he's going to talk about how you can give wrong way. And he says, be careful, pay attention that you don't give the wrong way. I want you to see that alms is a word that talks about giving to the poor or giving to other people. Uh, Jesus was teaching us that there is a right way to give, but there's also a wrong way to give. And we need to be careful. We want to serve him, but we want to serve him well. We want to, we want to serve him in the right way. And so he says here, there are things that prove if your giving is right or wrong. Really, Jesus was teaching us. Watch now. Giving is really a part of your service. Service for who? Service to him for others. So God blesses us with our money, with our time, with our abilities. And what he wants us to do is to make sure that we are faithful to give in the right way with the right attitude that we are serving him when we give. Um, it's interesting that uh, Jesus said the proof of your service will be the way that you give and the way that you pray. Interesting. Many times today, people I've seen people who give the wrong way. And I've seen people pray the wrong way. Giving and praying something you cannot hide. Something you cannot pretend. The real you will be seen in the way, in the attitude you have when you give, and the attitude you have when you pray. So we really do need to pay attention here and focus. Jesus did not command the people who are listening to him that they should give to the poor. He didn't tell them who to give to. He just tells them how they should give and why they should give. And we're going to see that very clearly. Jesus never commanded that we give. He says here uh, that after you're saved, the teaching is after you are saved, you have received Christ, you're saved, finished. You will want to give. Your heart will be overflowing with joy. You say, Jim Brayson, is that true? Well, let me lead you to another place in the Bible. There was a man, he was short. His name was Zacchaeus. Uh, if you remember, he climbed, up, he climbed up in a tree, came out on a limb because Jesus was going to pass by. He wanted to see Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ got there underneath his tree, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm coming to your house today. Well, we know that Zacchaeus was not, not a good person. As a matter of fact, when Jesus asked him to come down, some people started gossiping about Jesus. Oh, look, he's going to a sinner's home. Why would he do that? And they really criticized Jesus. But Jesus knew the heart of Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus had been a tax collector. And the truth, Zacchaeus had stolen, really. So let's say Rome said that the person owed $10. Zacchaeus would say, uh, you owe $40. He would take, they would pay $40. He would take 30, put it in his pocket, and he would give the 10 to Rome. He was stealing from people, and he did it regularly. And the people could not complain. Why? Because he represented Rome. So they were stuck. But the people knew Zacchaeus. He was, he was a cheater, and he was a thief. And they didn't like him. But Jesus said to him, come down. I'm coming to your house today. Zacchaeus came down from that tree, went in, and prepared a meal for Jesus and the people who were friends with him. And during that meal, he said this, he stood and he said unto the Lord, 
He said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I will give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man, false accusation, I will restore to him fourfold. That shows Zacchaeus' heart had changed. You say, Jim Brayson, Zacchaeus say finished? I think so. Here is proof. I told you before, the way you give, your attitude in giving, will show what is inside your heart. And so Zacchaeus, he had stolen and cheated before, and now he's going to give back. Not one, not two, not three, not four. Four times more than he took. His heart had been changed. If we go back to our verse in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, he says, Take heed that you do not your alms, your giving, before men. These two words are important. You see... If we give to show off, look at me, look at me, I'm going to give a lot of money. I remember one time when I was a young man, I, I worked for a painter, and uh, we went into a church, it was not a Baptist church, it was a very, very different church, and I remember we went in there to paint one room in this church. And uh, we went downstairs to eat our lunch one day, and we saw the bulletin there laying on the table where we were going to eat our lunch. And uh, the person that I worked for was also a Christian, and he said to me, come here, look at this bulletin. And I opened the bulletin. I was shocked. Why? They put in the bulletin how much every person that had come the week before had given in the offering. And, and like the, the pressure was on the people that came to give a lot so they could be seen with a big number in the bulletin. I was shocked. Jesus said, we should never give that way. We should never give for the applause of the people around us. In other words, an, an, another way to say it is that we don't take our money and hold it up and everybody see what I'm doing? I'm I'm given this, and, and we should never do that. Never. We should give. He says, be careful. Be focused on the way you give, and be careful that you do not give your gifts before men. Uh, Jesus had said earlier in this same sermon, do you remember this verse in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16? He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify you? No. Glorify your Father who is in heaven. When we give, we are glorifying our Father in heaven, not ourselves. So if you've been giving, hoping other people see you're giving a lot, that's wrong motivation. That's a wrong attitude. And God cannot and will not. He'll refuse to bless that kind of giving. So be careful. When you give, you're not doing it to impress people around you. You're giving to glorify God, not to glorify yourself. Let me say it again. When you give, you're, you're doing it to glorify God, not to glorify yourself. That's very, very, very important. Let's see verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the, in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. He's going, coming back to the same idea. Let's look a little bit. He says here, Do not sound the trumpet or make an announcement or make a big show. Hey, 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 everybody look at me, look at me. I'm going, he said, don't do that. Uh, that's what the hypocrites do. The word hypocrite is an interesting, it's an interesting word. It's a word that was used for actors in the day of Jesus. You understand when, when they had a drama, a drama, Back in the days of Jesus, they, they had 
theaters, people would come and sit, uh, you know, up on the hills and, and people would do, they would act and do different, different things. The actors who were in did not have fancy costumes. What they would do is they would make a mask. They had a different mask for each of the, the characters in the story, and they would put on this mask, and then they would put on, put on this mask, and put, then put on this, and they could become three different people in the, in the drama. Does that make sense? And this mask is the word that is used for hypocrite in our Bible. Well, what is Jesus teaching us? The, the hypocrite pretends to be something they are not. They put on the mask to show one thing, but behind the mask is the real person. And Jesus said to us, don't you put on the mask when you give. Don't you give in a way to sound, to sound the trumpet so people will look at you don't be like the, the hypocrite with the mask. Don't do that. He's saying we don't want to give in a way that draws attention, attention to us, but the attention will go to God. If we give in a way that draws attention to us, if we give and we make sure everybody knows I gave, I gave, and I gave a lot, I gave whatever uh, number you want, that, he said, is being hypocrite, putting on a mask, trying to show yourself some person you are not. He said there in that verse, they do it, he said, they do that, and they have their reward. What reward did they get? Are they going to, will they get a reward in heaven? No. Their reward was here on the earth when they heard the praise of men near them. And that praise lasts short time. Really, it's empty. Uh, empty. It's not worthy of praise. It's not real reward. It's a false reward. And he says, he warns, and he says that the people who do that, they're going to get a short time of honor here on the earth. But that's not true honor. And so he encourages us to be sure what is your motivation when you give. People who do this, their motivation is impure. They're not interested in giving to help other poor people or to help God in his service. They're interested in giving so they, they themselves will get the reward. The reward, why? The praise of men for that short time. And Jesus warned us, don't give that way. Don't be guilty of giving that way. Your reward, short, empty, not worth it. He goes on in verse 3. He continues. An interesting verse, but really pretty clear what he, mean, what he means. He says, verse 3, But when thou doest thine alms, let not thy left hand Know what thy right hand doeth. Don't let that hand know what this hand is doing. What is Jesus talking about? It's a very simple idea. He says this, When you are giving, do your giving private. Not public. Not sounding the trumpet. Not announcing to everybody. Not making a big show. Hey, I'm giving. I'm giving this. No, don't do that. More like, and this hand, left hand says, what are you doing? Right hand says, not your business. You get it? Right hand gives, left hand doesn't even know it's happening. Now, I know hands don't think, but Jesus is making a point. When, when a person gives wrong way, it's... Everybody knows that's not, that's not the right way to give. That's the wrong way to give. He said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. We should give in a way that only God knows what we give. We're going to talk later about 
how uh, how much not not how much but the worth of our gift we'll talk about in a in a few weeks ahead here but i want you to see that we should not when when we give we should not be waiting for a person to praise us that's wrong i can remember when i was a boy and i was i was wrong i was just a boy i was immature i didn't know what i was doing i remember i i uh, had earned some money i was a uh, I, I delivered newspapers in the morning on my bike. I would, you know, newspapers. I got paid $7 every week. Whew! I thought I was a rich, I was a boy, just a boy. And I remember one, one time our church was buying, trying to buy a new piano. So they had announced for many, many weeks before, we're going to take, we're going to take up a special offering for the piano on this day and I can remember I was thinking praying I said okay I'm going to sacrificially give so that week I went to church and normally I would give 70 cents I got paid seven dollars my tithe was 70 cents but that week that special week I decided I'm going to give double so I gave my 70 cents in regular off offering when the piano offering came by, I gave 70 cents in there. My cousin was sitting next to me, my, my cousin er, Earl. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm giving for the special piano offering. He said, how much did you put in there? Now, this is where I was wrong. I was immature. I was wrong. I said, I put in an extra 70 cents in there. He said, they're not going to know that 70 cents was put in for the piano. I said, it doesn't matter, I'm giving for the piano. And I was kind of upset with him. True, this happened. The next week, in the bulletin, our church bulletin, I opened it up and they had uh, the offering from last week was this much. The offering for the piano was this much. And guess what? The offering for the piano was something like 1,570 cents. This is where I was really, really wrong. I, I feel embarrassed about it today. I took that bulletin and I showed my, I said to my cousin Earl, Earl, look at this, there's my 70 cents. Oh, and I bragged. I was guilty of all these things. I was letting my cousin know what I gave and that my gift was important. I don't, I don't think that 70 cents allowed us to buy the piano, but you understand, anyway. So Jesus warns us. Let me show you the last verse for today, verse 4. In verse 4, he says, That thine alms, remember this means giving, that thy alms may be in secret, that thy Father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. First, I want you to see, this is an important phrase. Thy Father... The God the Father, you cannot see God the Father. He, you cannot see Him, but He sees what you and I do in secret. I love there's a verse in 2 Chronicles in the Old Testament, verse 16, verse 9, or chapter, chapter 16, verse 9. It says this, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. What for? to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect, complete, right toward him. I want you to see, when you give, no other person can see your heart, but he can. His eyes never close. He's watching. He sees what's happening in your life and my life. He knows your motivation for giving. And it says here in verse 4 again, the person who gives privately will be rewarded openly. There will be a day that God is going to give rewards for people who give in the right way. I want to encourage you and challenge you. These four simple verses here in, in this chapter talk about us having the right motivation for giving. Remember I told you, he was going to tell us how to, to give right. Don't, don't do it to show off to people. Do it privately. 
Why do we give? We give because God has blessed us and we then have the opportunity to use what God gave us to be a blessing to other people. And so I want to encourage you and challenge you as you think about your giving. How should you give? Go back and review these verses, 1 through 4 of chapter 6. Go back and look at the people who really criticized Jesus. Go back and see Zacchaeus and see the change of his heart, how he made a decision. What I have done wrong, now I'm safe, finished, now I need to do right. And Zacchaeus was a man who knew money, and so he knew he had stolen. He gave back. I want you to think about one last thing as we close. I was taught this many years ago, and it's true, it, it really works. I want to teach you the principle of giving and how God expects us to give. A God blesses you and gives you things, not only money, but money, but your abilities, your time, uh, your, your wisdom, all those things, God gives to you. Now, this is now yours. God gave you this. And you, you take, God gives you, you hold it. Ah, oh, this is mine. But you see another person that needs this. You have a decision to make. You can just hold, you can put it away, God bless you, and it's still here, you haven't given, you hold it. You can hold it, or you can say, God gave to me, you have a need, I give to you. Oh, God's given me more, oh, gives me more, oh. Wow, I thought I had given away, it's gone, I won't have it. Wow, oh, that person has need. I give. Oh, I get more. Oh, that, that person has. Oh, I get more. I'm telling you, this is a true rule, law of God. When we give, God gives to us. If we give, God gives. If we hold, if we hold, then God holds. He doesn't give. He holds. But God, I need more. I use this, I use this for myself. I need more now. And God says, I'm sorry. You did not give. I'm not going to give you. You understand this principle. God gives you, you give someone. The things that we have, the things that we get, are not ours. God gives us everything we have that is good and perfect and acceptable. We must look for opportunities to give and give. I will tell you many times my wife and I have seen this truth uh, really shown out in our lives. We have given and God has blessed and given so much more than we could ever expect I want to say to you, as we close today, I, I hope you remember the story of my grandfather, the farmer, the poor, really broke farmer with eight children. He made a promise to my mother that he would give her a saxophone. Can I tell you, my mother never played the saxophone, never one time. But you know what happened? My mother told me that story, and I remembered it. My mother's life was blessed because my grandfather obeyed the touch of God and gave the money to the missionary. My mother, her life was blessed. She passed it on to me. And I have learned from an early age that money is not my own. It's given to me, and I give it to others. And so as Jesus taught this lesson here, let me remind you that what God gives you, He expects you to use to help other people. Don't hold on to your money or your things or your abilities or your time so hard that you lose the opportunity to receive more. Take what God gives you and give it away. 
and you will get more and you can give it away and you will get and that just keeps on going all the way through your life let's pray heavenly father thank you for the time here in matthew chapter 6 help us to remember these words and be faithful to practice this it's easy for us to talk about this it's hard for us to do it so we pray for wisdom help us have opportunities to share what you've given to us with others we pray in jesus name Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week.